Hello internet friends, this is going to be a video on how to defeat Quilara Aideen and Riano Umak. They are the Jedi that are part of the Master Jedi Cloak Collection. You need to defeat both of these guys in order to get that cloak. These are fights that you can't do in a group, you've got to do it solo, but you can get help from other character classes in various ways and I'll touch on some of that. I'm going to talk you through how I did it, starting with Quilara. I followed the wiki quite closely, but what I found was that I didn't need half the buffs that the wiki seemed to suggest you need for this particular fight. I did it with far fewer buffs and just a little, a couple of tweaks to the rules in the guide that I, I felt could potentially be misleading or that I made mistakes following. I came up with a much hard and fast rule that seemed to work much better for me. So I'll talk about that when we get to the fight. But first of all, you need to see my equipment and all the buffs that I used for this fight and my lightsaber and so on. This is just so you can get an idea of relative power levels and stuff and compare to yourself, whether you need to work a little bit more or you're way past this power level and you should be able to do it. My gear is not amazing, so you will be able to see. Kinetic resistance seems the most important. I think that is what all lightsaber damage does. So I have spec for kinetic and I'm focusing on kinetic. There was a rumor that one particular type of Jedi does energy damage, but I don't know if that's correct or not. So the first thing is the target enhancement helm, which has kinetic of 5039 and also gives a bonus to strength of 20 and precision 20. Next, it's the Jedi robe, which has agility, constitution and strength at 185 and it has 4000 kinetic resist, I believe. Casual shirt, constitution 9. Link steel gloves, agility 20. I've got the champion's emerald pendant, constitution and look 25. Champion's metal band, precision and stamina 25. Champion's metal band again, constitution and look 25. Gilded combatant ring, constitution look 25. And another combatant ring, look 25, stamina 25. I also have a personal shield generator. Like, uh, obviously you can min max this stuff. I don't need this energy for this fight. The energy protects kinetic 1897. I should have got a personal shield with more kinetic. So there's kind of these loads of tweaks I could do to this. All right, the next thing, very important thing is the lightsaber DPS, because you need to do gradual DPS to this character in order to win. So Weapon DPS 1154 on this lightsaber. The next most important thing is the inspiration buff. Obviously, I'll just talk you through what I got for that. So I got 7% bonus to glancing blow. Second chance, 24% chance to heal when you're hit. Kinetic, 3, 750, uh, kinetic defense, and 60 agility. The buffs that I'm going to be using, I'm going to meditate. That is, you need to, well, you don't need to, but I had unlocked that ability. So uh, meditate on vision of the future, which gives 3% critical hit and 85% bonus to strength. I also have my little Minoc here. Uh, the little familiar he gives a passive boost to agility doesn't count as help in the fight so you can use him also use favor of the elders down at the bottom here always good to pop that if you have it i think everyone has it don't they uh full suite of medic buffs very very important it's so much like just part of what you do every day you almost forget it but don't forget those medic buffs and the other buff that i am using is the Danelian Fizz Pudding, which gives luck bonus to 1-1 one, one, and block chance plus 3, block value plus 30. The next things that I'm using are the Officer Stim Packs, and Deck is an officer at the minute, so he gave me these, but the officers are always kind of buffing in, on, in and around the starport, so you can go and get these from them, just ask them to be invited to a group. Uh, you've got the st Field Stim Pack, which you use as a kind of a backup heal uh, uh, to complement your main heal, so drag it to the hotbar, it's right there. Uh, and I also use the Tactical Serum F, which uh, is another nice boost. You might notice in my backpack there, I have some other things like the Sith Holocron that would, it would have been better to use, but I'd actually tried a couple of times, so I didn't have that available. I used the Tactical Stim instead. 
And since Deck is an officer at the minute, I actually took him with me and kept him in the group. And you can get you can benefit from his officer buffs. So the ones that I used, I'm not sure if you can use more than this, were Tactics, which gives a bonus to offense. Focus Fire, which gives a bonus to uh, defense, uh, um, is it Strike Through? I can't quite remember. Oh, oh, it's right there. Increased chance to bypass part of your opponent's armor and Strike Through chance. That's it. Uh, and the final one, it's called Pistol Mastery, but I think it applies to everything else as well, not just pistols. Damage output modified by five action cost modified by five. The other thing I wanted to mention is the saber block macro. This is just so you don't have to micromanage your saber block firing. It's really easy to do. Let's say UI action toolbar slot zero zero. So that refers to where I have put my saber block. You can change that number to whatever slot you're using. Forward slash uh, semicolon forward slash pause 10 semicolon macro and then the name of the macro that is your saber block macro and then semicolon and that will just keep cycling so as soon as it's uh, finished it will start again you don't have to micromanage it okay and we need to look at my expertise finally don't we uh, enhanced strength 50 enhanced constitution 50 enhanced agility 50 enhanced stamina 50 it's a very tanky build alacrity i maxed that out force cloak is not really relevant for this Premonition, I maxed that tree out. Uh, we got the defensive fighting for the chance to parry, 10%. Improved saber block, I maxed that out. I have four shockwave, which we're not using for this either. In the path, I'm light side, so cautious nature, uh, reactive response, max all of those out. I, ma I maxed all of those out. You do what you like, but this is what I was doing. Saber reflect, then improved saber reflect. Anticipate aggression, damage is reduced. Hermetic touch, not really relevant. You can't clear the debuffs that these guys are going to put on you. But this is the important one, the boost to your healing potency. Very important because we're going to be healing a lot. So that's the build I was using. Uh, let's go to the fight. I'll, uh, I'll talk you through the, the basic tactics uh, involved. So basically the trick to this fight is that Quilara has a debuff that actually reflects damage back at you. So if however much action you use on an attack will be reflected back to you. So if you're using specials and whatnot, you're going to get hit for huge damage. It's not possible to do it. You'll kill yourself essentially. She'll, she'll reflect that damage back onto you. So you have to use passive kind of DPS, just your general, uh, your auto attack. The wiki suggests that what you should be doing is looking for that buff, that debuff to drop and then do a ton of specials. But I found that when I did that, the window was quite short and I would occasionally hit myself. I think a much better way to do it is just to be patient and not try and do any specials whatsoever in this fight. I lost a couple of times by mistiming things. So I think it's better to forget about specials and doing damage to her other than your passive auto attack dps obviously you're going to be using heals all the way through so you need to time those okay so let's start the fight deck is with me i'm grouped with him i've got my familiar out and so on your stance for this for my build should be the stance stance you know the light side stance so you can benefit from the points that you've put into the light side tree so the only abilities that we're going to use in this are a saber block we've got the saber block macro that will be running on its own all the way through we're going to use Saber Reflect because the defenses that that affords are greater than any damage that might be caused to us. Um, we're go and we're going to use the main Jedi heal, which is the big one from the light side tree. And we're going to use that Officer Stim Pack. So really, Saber Reflect and the two heals are the only thing we really need to think about in this fight. So I'll just do a little bit of commentary at the start here and then I'll let it play out. The Saber Macro is running now, so we can forget about that and just watching the health slowly go down and pop the heal when appropriate. I had really not got my uh, game down at this stage, so it just goes to show how this is doable in that I'm not being optimal here, so I shouldn't really have Saber Block and Saber Reflect running at the same time. You should alternate those.
that was the big heal going off. I, I think I'm waiting here to use it till I have low health, which I don't think is the best thing to do. Knowing how much it heals, I would know better now and just top up with the little heal. I'm just trying out those little stim packs that you get from the officer's other um, tree there. That's the only other thing in this fight that I had. Um, but yeah, but those little uh, stim packs at the bottom in slot 7 and 8, those just come from an earlier ability of the officers. They're not really relevant. They don't do any appreciable healing. I was just experimenting. All right, so literally from this point on is a case of timing those heals and just trying to keep your health topped up. Uh, I will let the fight play out in case you want to watch it through um, and stop jabbering. You may hear a kind of echo off to the right. That is because I had the sound on on Dex's screen at the same time. So the kinds of <laughs> the sounds are kind of duplicated. So apologies for that. Also, after this, I'm going to talk about the light side Jedi that you need to do for the collection quest as well. So either skip the fight or if you want to know about that, do stick around. So that is it. Far fewer buffs than are generally thought to be needed. I'm not sure if the intervening time, like since the wiki was written, it, it might have been made a little bit easier. I'm not sure about that, but um, it's worth having a go. If there's any lessons to learn, just worth having a go with what you've got. You never know, you might be able to do it. Uh, that's what I did with Naplu here. I did want to mention that I also recorded the next fight with the light side Jedi, but I had a major crash at the time and i lost the footage so uh i can't show the footage i wanted to do that in another video however at the end of this video i can tell you the differences because you've already seen um my equipment and so on 
and a lot of the buffs remain the same. So what I could do, if you're interested in an Anax fight, is just talk about the things that I changed and some of the things that I did differently from the wiki. So let's do that now. So the principle with the Briano Umak fight is that you have to tank his damage for three minutes without killing him. You just have to survive the onslaught from him. The problem is he has two kinds of debuffs and which debuff you get depends upon which stance you're in. If you're in the light side stance, then you get this debuff that um, kills your healing. So you can't heal yourself. It's really bad. To get around it, you have to switch from focus to the light side stance and so on, so that you don't get that really bad debuff to healing. The problem is it takes a lot of fine tuning and it may be at this stage that I'm at with Napalu, the buffs that I have and the gear that I have, it's not actually possible. In fact, I think it might be the case. I just don't have enough buffs because I think I got the timing pretty down in the end and I was still dying. However, there is a way around it suggested by the wiki and this worked for me, but th the certain things didn't work for me and I'll explain that. But the basic principle is just for this one fight, switch to dark side so come to remorseless nature get all of that get all brutality ruthless get all of ruthless precision tempt hatred i think you need force choke and then you get access to force drain with force drain you don't have to worry about that stance switching just stay in the focus stance and use force drain to heal yourself it will do a bit of damage to umak but not enough to kill him don't worry about any light side things. I think just come back to your general path and get as much evasion and stuff like that as you can. Saber block is still important. You're still going to have saber block running. But remember, you won't have saber reflect because we're not in this uh, light side for the fight. So let's assume you've done that. The fight has started. Start your saber block macro running and use force drain and your stims, officer stims, if you have them, to keep yourself healed. This is the bit where the wiki didn't work for me. It suggests using Force Drain 1. I don't know why that would be, because Force Drain 5 is the bigger heal. So I was using Force Drain 5 the time that I won. And the wiki also suggests that you wait until you're down to like a, a third of your health before you use the Force Drain. That's completely incorrect for me. I had to just keep spamming force drain. Whenever it was up, you know, the cooldown was off, I hit it. So that you just keep topping up your health constantly. And it did not do enough do damage to Umak to kill him. And it kept me healed. I was using those officer stims as, as well, you remember. So that is the way I did it. Spec into the dark side, stay in the focus stance, saber block, then keep spamming force drain and any stims that you have. One side note I did want to mention is this idea of creating a first generation lightsaber or any low damaging saver for the site for the fight so you don't kill Umak. In my experience I was never in any danger of killing Umak, um, particularly with this expertise setting. Uh, I'm not even using Saber Reflect so I don't know. I, I, I don't think the first generation lightsaber thing is even necessary. If all you're doing is blocking and using force drain and heals, um, I don't think you need to worry about this. Just one other thing to mention. Uh, I have my little notes here. I was taking notes because I knew I wanted to do a little bit of a video. It's really annoying me that there was no footage of this. But um, instead of using the officer stim pack for this battle, everything else as I say, it was exactly the same, except I used the Sith Holocron for this one, which gives 150 constitution and stamina. And I also used the Meditation Crystal, which gives strength and stamina 125. The Meditation Crystal doesn't last very long, but it's still worth popping. I also changed my Inspiration buff. I got Healer at max 15%, so that will um, increase the potency of all your heals. Again, I got Kinetic. 3750 second chance is on 12 percent heal on hit i think i hope that's not a typo but get as much second chance as you can and then i got 30 uh, 30 to constitution all right so i hope that makes sense i'm sorry i couldn't get the footage in fact i think i might have a little bit the only footage that remains of me waiting through mac between attempts at defeating him so i think i'll put that at the end for the sake of posterity. I hope this video helped you. Let me know in the comments. I've been up yet and I will see you next time.